Who wins in a straight fight? Radical Islam or a radical LGBT? Ladies, gents and Pikachus, let's discuss it. Well, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Who would win in a kind of theoretical boxing match, if you like, a, um, an ideologue boxing match between the LGBT extremists and the Islamic extremists? If you put them together and you let them have it out, you know, with minimal police supervision, what would the result be? So that's kind of like what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, because of things like what's happening in the East End in London with the Trocadero being um, remodelled into Europe's biggest mosque, <laughs> which obviously is going to upset the locals, being as it's probably Europe's biggest and most vocal gay and LGBT population. So, um, and, you know, and we're right, we're, the, the Islam is celebrating Eid at the moment, so they've got like two three i don't know i think two weeks more of that and then you know it's like fasting at the end they have a big celebration so not only are the people who live in the east end going to have to shut their mouth and not say anything and be happy with what's happening even though they weren't consulted the guys that they have just moved in are going to be having a party in their face and they're not going to be in the most patient of moods because they've just fasted for two weeks so if this is the incoming ideology that they're going to push in London, which is clearly what's happening, and this is against this, which is the one which accepts all inclusivity and diversity rules, you know, lets everyone be equally poor and rubbish and, and powerless. But if that's what you want, if you want to be equally nothing, then you subscribe to that. And that's what they've done. So um, I wonder who will win. I don't want to make any for once i don't want to make any premature predictions this isn't really an obvious one i think in the outset in the in the outlay it's going to be the mosque and the muslims that win obviously they've just moved there so they're expecting it to be you know they know they're not going to be well liked by the locals so they're expecting that they'll deal with that but then as time progresses it'll be interesting to see what the counter plan is because people live there what they're going to do move out ah oh, we hate these new you know, you've moved our enemies on our doorstep, they're going to say. What are we all going to do? Move out? Of course they won't. They'll want to stick around and they'll want to fight their corner. I think this is this must be Sadiq Khan's plan. He must be trying to weaken the government and make the government look really bad because he's planting the seeds of riots and discord later in the year. And there's going to be nothing anyone can do about it. He's the guy who's holding it up. He's the guy in control of it. So, you know, if he's got support in the government, maybe elements within the government are trying to get some sort of plan moving i don't want to call it a coup i don't know yet i'm just speculating but the, the the obvious signs are there so anyway how do we go about avoiding this well you could um like i say you could go with the the communism doctrine which is seemingly what some elements of the government have done where everybody's allowed in as long as they play nice you know and the guys who set the play nice rules are obviously more equal than everyone else so it's kind of like it's orwellian put it that way if you read orwell so um, how do we get around it? Well, like me, you can be a Christian and then you obviously have your own laws and your own rules. It's kind of like Sharia, but it's the ones this country originally, traditionally was built on rather than uh, some other countries' rules. So this is our Sharia, if you like, and that's what I think we should do. So I do that. And that's obviously based on an even older law than Sharia. It's based on the uh, Hebrew Tanakh, you know, the, the Hebrew law. And expressly forbids the teaching of sex to children and things like that. It expressly forbids um, putting a large angry population of um op opposition next to another friendly group that's your people so all of that should be read by anyone who gives a damn and understood and then you're gonna have to pick your ideology so i think i'll end the video there if you you can either uh, tolerate encourage uh put up with all this and be called a racist if you disagree with it or far right that's another thing they like to do you don't like it you're you must be far right so they immediately start dissing you and trying to destroy your reputation again it's what the communists do so like i say i'm a christian we're not about um other people's gossip or reputations our reputations are based on our behavior our actions so my action is to vocally but politely dissent i don't think this is a good idea sadiq khan and anyone else who's encouraging of this i think building the biggest mosque ever right where you put it at the time where you've built it and saying the things you've said is inciting uh, an uprising of riots you, you, you're you're looking to to you're looking to build a social wall that's what you're looking to do Sadiq Khan don't think you haven't been spotted so anyway I'll end the video there I hope that gave you something to think about anyone who lives in London who's either Islamic or homosexual please be very careful not to attack the opposite group or make things worse 
uh, this isn't going to go away so um yeah i hope you enjoy hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you in the next one bye So it turns out Islam is this country's only far-right option really with any notoriety and any power. So maybe that's something to consider if you are far-right, I mean I don't know anyone who is, but there you are, that's the truth of it. So uh, see you in the next one.